Hi, I'm Caitlin, and this is Book Chats. Today's my January wrap-up. I read 13 books in the month of January. Three of those books, actually, I primarily read in 2014 at various times during the year, but I just happened to finish them in the month of January. So the first is A Long Way Gone, Memoirs of a Boy Soldier. I read this because a friend of mine read it. We both saw this author speak at the National Book Festival about his newest book. This book was his first, and it's his memoirs about his time growing up in Sierra Leone when it was very war-torn and had a lot of conflict. What surprised me most about this book it was really difficult to read. It took me a long, long time. I think I've been reading it for five months or something. What was surprising to me is that the actual part where he's a boy soldier is a very small portion of the book. There's a lot before, and then there's a lot and he was getting rehabilitated. And then even at the end, it's not like a traditional ending to a book. It just kind of ends and I was like, whoa, what was happening and, and what happened after? And I know that he eventually made it to the United States because he references a couple things because I saw him speak. It's a really, it's a very interesting book in that my perceptions of it were totally wrong. I also had started reading Yes, Please, Amy Poehler's memoir in the fall on ebook. I had gotten it from my library on ebook, and I was so disappointed I could not finish. I just, I had all these expectations, probably unfairly. I expected it to be a little more like Leslie Nope and a little less like Amy Poehler, which is completely unfair of me. And also, I just felt like there were some things that I didn't connect to and were extraneous, and I didn't understand why they were there. But I kept hearing such good things about the audiobook, and so I put a request in for the audiobook. The audiobook came in in January, and I started listening to it, and it was amazing. It was one of the best audiobook experiences I've had because Amy Poehler doesn't just like read her book. She brings in guests to read things. She has a uh, like random improv events. Like I just would recommend if you are interested at all in reading Yes Please, you absolutely should listen to the audiobook. You should not read it. You need to listen to it. It is like such an experience that you have to have in that way. And then the third book that was a holdover, I actually was like 95% done with in 2014. It's called Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, and I loved this book. I thought it was wonderful. I didn't agree with everything, but I thought that it was a great book. It's a collection of essays, actually. So I had like two essays left, and it got turned back in, and I thought, oh, that's fine. I'll just get it on ebook. But I just had gotten so used to the reader's voice in my head, and I wanted to hear the reader's voice. So I eventually admitted I was never going to read it on ebook, and I rechecked out the audiobook, and I finished that and loved it. It was probably my favorite book of the month. Then I'm kind of just going to go through the rest of the books I read in little categories, and I will probably not talk about all of them at length. Uh, the first is kind of like romance books that I read. One of them is officially, actually I have a copy of it here. A Christian romance book that my wonderful friend Lara bought for me for a gradu oh, graduation present. This is the like the only Christian romance author I read. I just love her work, and this is the only book that I hadn't read yet. So she was kind enough to buy it for me, and I read this like right away or in early early January. And I also on my Kindle from my Overdrive, I checked out two books that are technically not published as romances, but they have a lot of romance. There's a heavy romance element to them. And it was the uh, 10th and 11th book in Lauren Willig's Secret of the Pink Carnation series. So The Passion of the Pur Purple Plumeria and The Mark of the Midnight Manzanilla. I used to read these books. I, I read like the first five after they'd all been published. And then I was following them as they were published. And I moved up to DC, kind of like lost that thread and wasn't reading them. I just realized that the next book that's going to be published, which will be published pretty soon, is the last in this series. And I do want to read that. So I was like, oh, so I'll read these two. And they were good. I, um, I'm not like sad that I waited to read them. I think it was fine to wait, but they were kind of what I needed. Sometimes you just need something that is like light and fun, and that's what they were for me. Then there were several more audiobooks that I read. I listened to An Unquiet Mind, which is a very interesting topic, but I didn't feel like it was executed super well. It's about a clinical psychologist who is bipolar. And she writes about kind of her life, getting diagnosed, what it's like to be a professional and be openly bipolar because she kind of ended up telling several people and was kind of openly bipolar and that is very fascinating. Unfortunately, I don't know if audiobook was the right way to read it. It was read by the author and I just didn't, it wasn't as good as some other audiobook presentations and also, I don't know, I've, I've read a lot of memoirs now and I hate to be so picky but I just feel like it could have been a little better. I also read This Shattered World which is 
such a well done audiobook. I also listened, it's the sequel to These Broken Stars by Amy Coffin and Megan Spooner. And I listened to that on audiobook as well. And both of these audiobooks are very well um, produced and just very well done. And I love that format for them. And I very much enjoyed it. I enjoyed this series because it kind of tricks you with what it's going to be and it ends up actually both of these books have been a lot more authentically science fiction than I had originally assumed. Then I read Basic Black by Kathy Black which is kind of a business book. It's a memoir or um, it's kind of a memoir slash business advice book so I appreciated it and I was glad that I read it. And then I listened to one of my other probably my second favorite book of the month on audiobook as well. It's the second book in Maggie Steve Fodder's Raven Boys uh, Quartet, which is The Dream Thieves. I also listened to The Raven Boys on audio, and I loved it on audio. So I listened to The um, Dream Thieves on audio, and it was just really engrossing, really great. I loved it, and you'll probably hear about it from me in the future. The last three books that I read this month, I've already mentioned this in a different video, but I read War for the Oaks by Emma Bull, which is a book that I own. I'm kind of doing something this year where I can't buy any more books until I've read at least five like for every five books that I own that I read then I can buy a new book so this is one of five but I guess this is is one too but it doesn't really count because I just got it for that purpose this one is like borrowed from a friend so I need to I need to get on that as you can see from my shelf all these books that I own and have not read I also read I've already turned this back into the library but I read Stitching Snow and that was for I mentioned that I was doing the debut author challenge for 2015 well Stitching Snow was a debut author from 2014 that just was a holdover. I hadn't gotten to it in 2014, so I just wanted to read it right away at the beginning of 2015. The last book that I read, and these were not in the order that I read them, by the way, I have decided I want to read all the Newbery winners, and so I've been working through those kind of steadily. So I kind of picked, I picked this one up because it's pretty short, and I wanted to get off the list, and it's The White Stag by Kate Ceretti. Ceretti? The, it's the epic story of the migration of the Huns and the Magyars from Asia to Europe and so it's like told in kind of a fairy tale way and it really reminded me of a different Newbery I read that I didn't like so much that was like Buddhist cat. Yeah, so one more down in my Newbery list and um, that was all that I read for the month. So just some quick notes on goals that I've made. For the year, I of course have read 13 books of my whole overall goal for the year and I have also read six books that count towards the uh, pop sugar challenge and I have read um, zero books that count towards the 2015 debut author challenge so that's where I'm at for the month I would love to hear what you read in January if you had to pick a favorite book of the month what would yours be mine definitely would be Bad Feminist which I just finished but if it was like my favorite book of the month that I read completely within January not like 95% of last year it would probably be The Dream Thieves yeah I'd love to hear what was your favorite book of January and how are you doing on your goals? Bye. I wanted to add a quick note about my February goals. So a lot of people will have like their February to be read list and I just don't read like that. I like to have a whole shelf full of books and then when I'm in the mood for something I just pick it up and I have and similarly my Kindle is full of books and I just pick which one next that I want to read. I do want to finish the books that I'm currently reading. I will probably be reading the 100 when it finally comes in from the library. I just started watching the show and now I really want to read the book because I want to compare them. Unofficially sort of these are books that um, are all like in some way would qualify for the Pop Sugar Challenge. So this is like my like shortlisted TBR of the books that I haven't read yet up here. And then of course anything on this shelf and I also have several requests at the library. But I just I'll like when I even when I go to the library I'll check out like 10, 11 books and then I will just read a couple of them before I have to turn them back in. I just like having options. So I'm never gonna have like a strict this is my to read list for February or for the next month. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. This is actually if you go look on my channel I took a picture of this shelf and that's what's my like big picture behind my channel so if you really want to know because you can't see it super well here um I will hope, try to update that picture as things change on that shelf <laughs> my questions actually then are what was your favorite book you read in January how are you doing on your yearly goals so far and what are your February goals do you set yourself strict goals for reading or not okay bye